Very pleased now to be joined here at SB Nation and blogging the boys by the one and only, the legendary, an all-timer. You know him, you love him, you better respect him. It is Mr. Billy Joe Dupree. Mr. Billy Joe Dupree, thank you so much for taking the time to join us this week. Well, well, thanks for inviting me today. It's always good to uh, to visit with the fan base, uh, even though it's been a little while since I've been there. You know, um, it, it's been a little while, but the the Cowboys are a team that um, that nothing really feels like a while, and I think that that's why people love them, and that's why um, so many different generations are connected by them. And I I do think that that spirit really comes to the forefront this week of all weeks. Um, it's obviously a, a tradition for the Cowboys to play on Thanksgiving Day, and so it's kind of baked into the fandom in that sense. Um, is it still a part of your Thanksgiving life to to kind of everyone sit around? Do you do you structure the meal and whatnot? We're gonna we're gonna eat by this time to sit down by this time because that's obviously kind of the way we all tend to live our lives. Uh, not on a regular basis. Uh, you know, since I re- when I retired, uh, my primary uh, interest was going to be to uh, spend more time with my family and that type of thing. And occasionally, uh, sports doesn't come into play um, in the process of doing that. But yeah, we, we try to catch as many games as we can. That's that's you know. That's what matters, and that's what's important. Uh, I have a three-year-old son, and so I'm I'm definitely um, trying to balance work and life and whatnot. And um, I think that that's an important fundamental value that everybody can carry forward. I am curious about your experience playing on Thanksgiving Day because I imagine that was challenging. I mean, uh, I cover the team obviously on, on a on a professional basis, and so. I do have to structure my holiday a little bit differently than, than maybe the average person. Um, what was it like when you were going through that? Did you did you eat on Fridays? Did you you know did you have a routine that you kind of stuck with on an annual basis? Well, actually, we tried to, but we kind of played it by ear on on a regular basis. If uh, depending on what time the game was on that particular uh, that particular day, and if it was during the uh, early game. Then we we try to get together as a family, and right now uh, in the city during that time, it was just uh, myself and uh, my wife, even my wife and my two sons and uh, sister-in-law. So we we just kind of got together um, Thanksgiving and and watched the games. If if they had ten games on, we watched eight of them. (laughs) That's um, that's that's what's important, obviously. Um, I do have your Thanksgiving Day statistics pulled up. If you uh, if you don't mind a little bit of a quiz, do you know how many touchdowns you caught Mm -hmm. on on Thanksgiving Day all time? Shoot, they uh, I couldn't tell you because that was. The game day was like a blur. It lasted the four quarters, but at the end of the day, it seemed like it only lasted about five minutes. Sure. No, I mean, I, I totally get that. So that you know, you know, this year when you're breaking bread, you can tell people you have um, you have four career touchdowns on Thanksgiving Day. You caught one against Washington in 1974. You had two, maybe this is a bit more vivid uh, in the memory, against Seattle in, in 1980. And then you had another against Cleveland. Yeah. In, in 1982. Does any of that jump to mind? Well, vaguely, but the uh, the Seattle one, because we didn't play Seattle on a regular basis uh, from that standpoint. Uh, but no, I mean, I just, just went out and played. I mean, I never, to give you the example of, of, of my concept of what was going on initially, just coming into the league, it was a year, the year, the following year after my rookie year, that I uh, realized that the last game I played uh, the previous year season was to go to the Super Bowl, and that wouldn't that that didn't phase me or didn't come to to a recognition until shoot after the season was over. Right. So now, the primary concern is doing my job and making sure I walked off the field as well as being carried off. Yeah, I mean that makes sense, obviously, to kind of you know live on a on a day to day and week to week basis and just kind of focus on the task at hand. Um, you're right that you obviously for the younger audience um, back in the day the the Seattle Seahawks were were in the AFC before you know the alignment that we know today, which which made the matchups a lot less common. Um, I am curious. I just I love Dallas Cowboys history, and that's why I'm so fond of your career um, in searching this. And, and I have some other things to get to, but I, I just have to know. Uh, it shows that that you all played a Thursday game in 1978 in October um, you played the Minnesota Vikings and I was just I, I could find no justification for this do you know why you played a Thursday game in the middle or it was the later part of October back in 1978 
78, that was getting close to, I guess, near the end of uh, my career in the, in the system. And the system and the, I say the system, the scheduling for the NFL changed drastically because they put more more uh, games in front of the fans and mm-hmm. it just happened to, uh, to pop up at that time. And I would suspect that, uh, and this is just, just my speculation, that that was just a test to see how well it would go. And if it went well, then shoot, we could do this again and we can get more to market and, and get another day out there, out the week for people right. to watch football. That's a, a, a really logical uh, presumption. And so I'll stick with that, uh, you know, is, is will be the official party line. Um, you in, in your career was such a, a selfless one, um, something that I, I greatly admire about you in your playing days, obviously dating back to Michigan State as well, and, and who you've been in your post-playing career. And as I understand it, that has really continued and, and rippled over in, into a lot of different things. Um, you're working with the Pro Football Retired Players Association. Uh, obviously, retirement is a can be a difficult thing for players to navigate. What all what kinds of services do you offer for retired NFL players? Well, at the stage that we are right now, we're trying to create the, well, I tried, we have created a, a couple of supplements uh, to service the retired players. And it's just a dental and a dental program. And, uh, and that uh, takes care of a certain part of the portion that they don't, don't already cover. And we're looking at other, other, um, health type issues of that nature to to help to support the uh, retired players and this particularly the pre-93 type guys because after 93 man he had too many zeros behind that one for guys that concentrate on what to do on the field right um do you all um that's a great point about 1993 and obviously after that i mean the nfl changed significantly with the dawn of free agency and whatnot um but but is there any level of work or um, construction that goes into working with players ahead of retirement. Obviously, that would be active NFL players, but uh, because retirement can hit and it can be a night and day difference for for players to adjust in in a number of different ways. So, is there any work that you all do or provide that that happens with players who are are maybe getting off the ramp, so to speak, and and not quite retired, but are obviously closer to that point than not? Well, if my memory serves me correctly, for the last I think eight maybe eight or 10 years or so, they've developed the uh, NFL um, alumni as well as the NFL Players Association and has developed a different type of programs to accommodate the guys from the pre-93 period. Right. And that's the biggest, biggest part of that is just dental and dental, dental and eye care. That makes sense. Certainly. I mean, there was a, a dangerous time and a, you know, a, a very different time, certainly from a safety and protocol standpoint, obviously relative to the NFL that we know today. Um, when it comes to people and, and players who, who you worked with or played with, um, what does that look like? I think uh, as fans, we, we like to believe that you all, you know, are, are friendly with one another, that you hang out with one another. Uh, what is your life like these days relative to discussing or chatting with or interacting with your former teammates? All right, that's a good point you mentioned. He added that caveat, former teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, at this stage, uh, we kind of kind of like leaving high school, mm. and then you know you've got this good group of guys and or friends or more men or women, and but once you leave high school, everybody's most people are in a different different situation or a different place from where where we all started out. So that being the case, we have to oh kind of work ourselves into the point of uh, getting familiar with what's going on and then uh, adjust accordingly. That makes sense. And I think high school is a great comparison just because um, when you arrive, in this case, to the Cowboys, you all have come from different places, you know, different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And you have families and um, you mentioned your wife and your sons. I mean, you develop lives and you grow and, you know, grow apart. I know people have a, a negative connotation with with terms like that, but it's just the, the circle of life in, in many ways. No, yes, it is. And uh, just just in tangible to that uh for the time that I spent in the NFL, um, my biggest focus was on dealing with terrible organizations, organizations that would afford people who didn't have uh, an opportunity to, to live comfortably, to, to at least uh, make a dent in that type of situation. But for the better part of my career, 
and I spent uh, dealing with charitable organizations uh, to kind of help folks, uh, people who improve their lives and do some of the things they want, they like, they uh, prefer to do. That's extremely noble of you. And again, why I think so many Cowboys fans are, are so, why they hold you so near and dear to their heart. Where does that come from? That spirit of, of giving and that spirit of selflessness? Well, it came from my youth growing up. I grew up in a Baptist household and went to a Catholic school for uh, elementary and then a public school for high school. So in mentioning that, what I'm trying to express to you, I had uh, I had church and God in my life at daily, not just on the weekend. That's um, that's that's the biggest. That's the way I live my life. What's your Baptist favorite Baptist hymn song? Well, actually, I'm Catholic. I lived in a Baptist household, but I went to a Catholic elementary school, and therefore I became a, I was baptized Catholic uh, from that standpoint. And, you know, you know, in the Catholic religion, we don't have any rock and roll songs, but we <laughs> have a few more few that touch pages. <laughs> yeah, these days, um, there's a lot of... Um we'll call it theater uh not not to say it's a, a bad thing but uh it can be intense um in in some respects uh mr dupree i think that's really well said it's interesting to just learn more about your life uh certainly and, and what helped mold you into the player and, and the person more importantly that you obviously were throughout your time in the nfl and it's again extremely impressive that you use that platform for such a good thing um and and the thanksgiving holiday certainly highlights a a, a level of giving and a level of uh, of selflessness and a level of taking care of, of your common fellow man and whatnot. And um, that that's why it's so cool to talk to you at this particular time. Um, what are you looking forward to this Thanksgiving? What, what, what's on, you know, what's your favorite part of the meal? I've, I mean, we've got to know while we're here. Well, at Thanksgiving, it's, it's going to be a little different this year. Normally we have the uh, family. We live, I live here in Dallas and my youngest son and his family is here and their in-laws are here and I got a few nieces and nephews. But uh, this Thanksgiving, I think we're just going to, uh, just going to play it by ear and see what's going on uh, in the process. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll have an opportunity to get together. And I want to mention one other thing uh, to you before we, uh, kind of part is, is that this personality I have, and, and the, that's what, and the, I tell you what generated uh, going to a Catholic school for for uh, eight years and then uh, living in a Baptist household all my life from that standpoint. But at some point in time, I can't recall when, I made a commitment to myself that if I ever had an opportunity to, if I ever gained any influence, use that influence to help people who may not have been able to help themselves. And I think that worked out uh, very well from the standpoint of the places and the people that I've been involved in. But on the other hand, just recently here, and the things that I don't look for or ask for, uh, I was awarded a uh, presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from the from the White House, and uh, that's gift has been over the course of a number of years. Well, that is highly impressive, and a congratulations to you, Mr. Dupree, um, and and certainly a, a just a a standing ovation if I could offer it. Uh, for the level of selflessness that you've exhibited throughout your life. Um, obviously, playing for a team like the Dallas Cowboys provides a stage, um, and, and not to say anything about anybody else, but we see and have seen different people utilize that in a number of different ways over the course of, of all history, and, and you are certainly chief among those who have uh, used it to, to the total and, and full degree. So congratulations to you in that respect. Uh, the work that you're doing with the Pro Football Retired Players Association, among the many things, the, the many charitable organizations and opportunities that you've had your hand in, and, um, is what this time of year and, and really all time of the year should be about. Um, so thank you so much for your time. I, I do have to ask as we close um, for your thoughts on this current Dallas Cowboys team. If, if you have been paying attention, you know, obviously you're, you're living your life and doing your thing, but if you've checked in on them from time to time. Well, I'll try to make it as brief as possible. And the biggest component that uh, kind of molds a football or any team is how long a group of individuals have played together as a unit. And if you will look back with the Cowboys, they have not had a stable lineup in the last three, maybe three years, three or four years. They've always they've been constantly changing people in the lineup. 
and guys have to know each other's tendencies in order to be a team. Now, you can do it as an individual, but you play as a team. If you know one guy moves here, you're going to have to move over here to cover it, and that only happens if you guys play together for a while. Cowboys had not had uh, a team that if the group of guys that they can call a team who's played together as a unit over maybe two years, maybe three. That's well said and uh, an extremely astute observation. Thank you so much for that, Mr. Dupree, and thank you for the time. A happy Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas to you and to yours. Uh, thank you for the time and for all that you're doing. On behalf of all Dallas Cowboys fans everywhere, thank you for the memories as well. You are one of the best. Okay, well, thank you, and I hope you guys, uh, you have a happy Thanksgiving, and all our, your fan base uh, have a great time on Thanksgiving Day. I think it'll be a good day for them.